All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to give this uh, a minute or so for people to get logged in and settled. Um, while that's happening, uh, I'd love to do a quick audio and visual check. So um, if you are calling in to participate in today's webinar and you can hear me and you can see me, if you can type something into the chat box so that we know that you can hear and see us, that would be great. You can say hello, you can say good afternoon. There we go. Thanks. All right, good job, everybody. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, welcome to today's WorkSmart Live. Uh, I'm Dawn Church. I'm WorkSmart's events manager. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple of quick things and, uh, about tools and whatnot for the webinar today, and then we're going to kick it off. So uh, number one, we really love an interactive webinar. So we find it so much more valuable for all of our guests and our clients if we can speak to your needs directly. So there's two ways that you can actively participate. One, you've already test driven, which is the chat box. Uh, this is a really great place to send things like requests for us to slow down or speak up um, or say, hey, that's a great point or uh, share your personal experiences with this topic. Um, the next tool is just right to the left of that, I believe. Um, it's to the left or the right, one or the other. Um, but you can submit some actual questions into the Q&A. So the Q&A icon is the best way to ask questions because it sends them to us in a nice, neat little checklist, um, which means that we can't lose them in that chat feed as you uh, are sending us messages back and forth, which is great. So um, we will have some dedicated time at the end specifically for Q&A. But as you think of your questions or if there's a question that you have about what we're talking about right here and now, Definitely send those questions in as soon as you think about them, because if they're relevant to what we're talking about, then we'll address them right then and there. And if they're not, if they're for later, we'll save them for later. So, and then the last thing is we are recording this webinar. So you will get a link uh, the email tomorrow with the recording that you're absolutely welcome to share with other people inside your office. Uh, you can rewatch it, uh, have it for forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, okay. So with that, I'm gonna start the recording. Okay, so welcome everyone to today's WorkSmart Live SMB Phone Home, uh, which is part of our remote office series. Uh, I'm Dawn Church, I'm WorkSmart's events manager. Uh, you've probably heard me speak a gajillion times on these things at this point now. Um, but today we're going to be taking a look at a, a pretty integral piece of our everyone's business operations, uh, and that is your phone system. So with teams being spread out all over the place and away from physical buildings, it's so much more important now than ever for SMBs to have a phone system that can also work remotely. So uh, your customers and your team members can still effectively communicate with each other and operate business as usual from wherever they happen to be, which we know is all over the place right now. So, uh, and as we mentioned in our email yesterday, the solution doesn't have to be sending your cell phone number out to all of your clients. It's probably not the best way to do things. Uh, so today we're gonna to talk about a better solution. Uh, and we're going to do that with our friends from Mistiva who are here to talk about hosted VoIP and a fully connected communication system that they have in their suite, which we're really excited about. So um, I have a couple people on the webinar today that uh, I want to introduce you to, uh, to take us through Next Diva and VoIP and all these fun things. Uh, first, we have uh, John Wolf and Chase Calloway. Hello. <laughs> uh, these guys hey, are... are <laughs> yeah, uh, these guys are our uh, reps from Nextiva. They're a lot of fun. We've been working with them for a few years now. You might have even met John uh, at our client appreciation events over the last couple of years in person. So um, thank you so much for joining us here today. And then uh, Marissa Wayman is back on the call again. Marissa is our marketing manager for WorkSmart and she's been with us for 10 years, 11 years. 
Did I say that? Uh, eleven. Yeah, eleven. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm only twenty-two. <laughs> exactly. Just half of your lifespan. <laughs> we start up early here at Wordsmith. Um, yeah, so in that time, Ruth has held a lot of different roles uh, and has been in a lot of different seats and has seen a lot of different things. So she's a really great resource for us today. So with that, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to pass this off to John and Chase, and you two can just take it away. All righty. Thanks for the awesome intro. I appreciate that. Can you guys see my screen? See the big blue Next Eva logo? Yes. All right. So we'll get rolling. Uh, hey, everybody. This is John Wolf of Next Eva. I'm down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Chase Calloway is on the call. He's our dedicated sales engineer. Um, so he's a technical resource dedicated um, to WorkSmart as well. So anything that's above my head, um, I'm, I'm one of those guys who always goes to sales engineering because they usually have a better way to do it um, and they have a, a bigger brain to, to bring in other resources as well. So that's why Chase is on the call just to help us out here. Um, but what I want to do today is tell you a little bit about kind of voice over IP in general and UCAS. And so UCAS is Unified Communication as a Service. And really what that just means is a, a fancy way for apps to live on top of a, a phone system. Um, so just like Don mentioned earlier, this is a, it, it was already an explosive time for this industry. Um, but given what's been going on the last couple of months, it's just a rocket ship ride. And then what we're seeing for the n other half of the year, um, assuming we come out of this, is that there's a lot more businesses that know they need to be in the cloud. So my intention today is going to tell you, just give you a general education of kind of where things are in the world, what the Next Eva flavor of that looks like. I don't want to do a Next Eva infomercial, so to speak, but um, we can't help it. We, we love this company. But uh, my intention is to kind of give you guys a good education on what's out there, where we fit, what your expectations should be um, as far as deployment and general use cases. Um, and then again, uh, Chase will kind of fill in the gaps as we go. Sound good? All righty, so we'll talk about UCAS in general. So the idea would be with UCAS is that you take your, uh, excuse me, there's a good example of uh, our app working right there. Um, the idea is you take your phone system out of your building and you put it into a hardened environment. And in our case, it's in a data center and it's actually in multiple data centers. So most of the uh, big VoIP providers have in common is having multiple data centers. Hopefully they all back each other up the way they do with Nextiva. But the idea would be is that there's no way for you to break your phone system by anything that happens in the environmental. So the power going out, you're losing your internet connection, you're losing your PRIs, those things don't happen because the phone system doesn't live there. The only thing that lives in your building are your computers, that can be your phones and your, your phone phone, um, which is just a computer that looks like a phone. Um, coincidentally, with Nextiva, this desk phone can go anywhere. Um, so in my world, I could take this to an office, I could be deployed, uh, three states away across the hall. All I do is plug this phone in, it re-registers, and the routing will follow the phone. Hope that makes sense. Um, so the overall idea here is that no matter where you are in the world, you're part of your phone system. And you don't have to use a desk phone. So your, your smartphone, your iPhone, your iPad, your cell phone, um, your PC, your Mac, your Android, your iPhone, those are all just phones. And the neat thing about the way all this works is they're interchangeable, um, meaning you can start a call on your desk phone, pick up your smartphone, hit the pull call button, walk out the door with it. Um, so what we're seeing a ton of the work from home folks is, do they want to bring their desk phone home? Great. Do you want to use your smartphone? That's cool as well. Do you want to use your PC here with a, like a headset like this? Absolutely. Uh, you can use your, you know, all the Apple devices, all the Android devices. You know, that's really the strength of what we do is that it takes the phone system and expands it to grow outside of the building. Um, the other nice feature there as well, and, we, and Dawn sort of touched on this a minute ago, is that you have the ability um, when you make an outbound call for the caller ID to show the, the business caller ID, not the personal. Um, same thing goes with texting, by the way. So the idea would be your work number, what we typically would call a DID, your direct inward dial number. That becomes your work number. So you have on your cell phone, you have your personal number and you have your work number. And if you're using your work number for work, then you get text across that, you can do video conferencing across that, and then, you know, work calls, um, which coincidentally, we'll show you in a minute what that looks like when it shows up in like an analytics product that we have. Um, but the idea is it keeps those worlds divided, um, which is really nice. And another piece that's nice about that is because it's a work number that lives on a personal cell phone. If that employee leaves, you still own that number. So all the relationships that are built on that number from a work perspective are, uh, excuse me, are, um, 
will come back to either the phone system or wherever you redirect it to their boss to whoever. So that's the idea here is that um, two different worlds divided a personal cell phone with an next even number. By the way, when the call comes in, you can tell it's a work call. You can tell it's, if it's, it's the difference between a work call and a personal call, you can tell by looking at the screen. And by the way, if you don't answer it, it'll actually go back to your next Eva voicemail, not your person. So it's really, really a good, a good uh, separation of those two worlds, if that makes sense. A um, couple of new things that are out in the world today, not only with us, but with a lot of other people. Um, obviously, a lot of folks that were Microsoft shops, um, whether they loved it or not, are now using Teams um, just because it was something that was built into their um, their licensing. So when they deployed work from home, a lot of people just were pushed into the Teams environment. Um, a couple of nice things we've done here recently is we've built an integration with Teams. Um, and we're not alone in this, by the way, but I think our flavor is a little bit better than most, is that it uses Teams as the endpoint, so as the app. So I'll show you the Nextiva app that we love. Um, but what this integration does is uses Teams as your, your endpoint, your soft phone. So you use Teams like you always would. You can chat, you can do team meetings, video calls, all that internal. But when it comes time to communicate to the outside world, that's when Teams jumps out and jumps onto Nextiva. And then from there you get you know, HD quality audio, five nines reliability, you know, analytics, all the things that we do. Um, but the better way to think of it is just the easiest way to wrap your head around it is Teams is a soft phone. And it's just instead of using the Nextiva soft phone, you're using Teams. Um, so you get all the all the all the things that you've learned to love about Teams, if you assuming you do, um, and then all the things that work really well about Nextiva. So HD audio, you know, all the things that are much better than um, what we've heard coming from other other folks just plugging kind of into Teams with SIP trunks and whatnot. Um, Chase, any you want to elaborate on that on the sort of the difference of how we do it versus uh, some of the early adapters that you know we didn't jump into that because we didn't think that was the right way to do it. I, I think you uh, hit the nail on the head there. Really, uh, we wanted to not be limited by Teams voice. Some of the other providers are using their uh, dial tone, so you're at the mercy of whoever has the lower SLA, the lower quality, because both are uh, both the provider and Teams are part of that voice call. Whereas with us, we are just making it that endpoint. Uh, you use Teams exactly as you would, but that dial pad now allows you to dial the outside world using Nextiva, or if you receive a call and it would normally ring your desk phone, it can also ring Teams. So you can choose where you want to answer that, whether you're on uh, your mobile Teams, your desktop Teams, maybe you just walked away from your desk and you want to still be able to answer that call, you've got Teams up anyway, it'll come right through. Yep. It's a really elegant solution. One of the nice things, too, is there's no additional charge on our, our side. Um, we can shelve it for a further discussion, but basically, as long as you have the right licensing on the Microsoft side, um, you just plug it into one of our seats. We don't charge extra for that um, as, a, as a Teams environment. So just food for thought. Um, but that's something that's big. The last couple of weeks has been huge. Um, the other piece here is, is a collaboration tool called Chime that we now use with Amazon. Um, so that'd be your multi-point video, much like Zoom we're on today. Um, and that's available for every single one of our not only new users, um, but our old users as well. So our older customers are now able to take advantage of that for free. Um, so we're rapidly adding that into the into those customers as we speak. Um, it's a really cool product. I like it. It's very easy, very approachable. Um, I find it to be much easier to use than a lot of the other ones out there. And then you have the powerful network of Amazon behind it as well. So um, that's exciting news for us this week. Uh, let's see. Touch on contact center real quick, just so you guys know, there is contact center out there. There's call center, there's contact center. Um, that's just answering calls in queue. Contact center would be answering emails, chats, and voice calls in queue. Um, feel free to reach out for us to us for further details. Just know that that's a big and growing part of the business on the voice over IP side. You no longer have to have call centers where you have 300 people in one big room answering out of queues. Literally, we have, actually, Nextiva has hundreds of people that answer out of our queues from their home. So back in the beginning of March, just like most of you guys, we went to work from home environment. We now have 1,200 employees at Nextiva that all work from home. Um, so we are truly Nextiva on Nextiva, but it is pretty amazing to think about that you can have that many people answering out of queue, sitting nowhere near each other. Um, pretty, pretty fun stuff. A um, couple other things that were, just to give you some other flavors of what Nextiva is up to is our CRM. So we wrote a CRM that we run our entire company on. We've now released that to our, the public as well. Um, everything we've got in our kitty bag, so to speak, is now available to our customers. 
Um, and basically the idea was this is a great fit for a small customer that doesn't have a CRM. It's not a replacement for Salesforce. This is not what it is, um, but it's a good relationship tracker and sentiment manager. Um, again, just reach out to us for further details. We can get on that, that rabbit hole. But the idea here, guys, is this, these type things live on top of the phone system. So the, the concept here, not only with Nextiva, but with, with others is you build the foundation, you build the communication system, and then there's software stacks that live on top that you can specialize, integrate with outside softwares that allow for screen pops and some other functionality there. But the underlying phone system is where all this starts. Um, so that's that foundation upon which we build. And that can be as complex as you need it to be, even on a per user basis, which is a neat concept as well. You know, a typical premise-based phone system, you would buy licensing based on the entire system. With us, you can have warehouse workers that have just a desk phone, all the way down to the road warriors that have desk phone, iPad, you know, iPhone, the whole nine. Um, and it's just a different license and you can mix and match with us as well, which is a, a nice thing. Let's see. And then the idea of all this is it all comes back together. So everything's being hosted in the cloud. It's all in one place. You can't break it. Um, it's in multiple data centers that are redundant and they all back each other up. Um, and again, you can mix and match based on what you need at that moment. So it's just as easy to kick off a conference call as it is a video call as it is a screen share. They're all under one environment. There's all one look and feel. Um, so one sign in gets you into the environment, gets you into what we call our platform it's called NextOS. And then from there, you pick where you need to go. What you're going to do? What are you going to do that that moment at that day? Um, but to keep things simple, remember it's at at its core, it's a phone system. So we can make it as simple as complex as you want. One of the fun things Chase and I talk about on demos a lot is we kind of meet you where you are from a technology perspective. So what what that, that mean, what that means is we can recreate what you have today, um, the things that you like. No matter how much people hate their phone system, they typically are a couple of things out there they they like about it. Um, but the fun thing for us is, though, a year from now, when you guys evolve and you change, you call, them, you call me, you call WorkSmart and say, okay, show me how to do it. And it's a nice thing for us. It's a conversation of showing you how to do it versus how much is this going to cost? Because there's so much features and functionality that's in there that people don't take advantage of typically from day one. But the fun part for us is as you guys evolve and change and move more and more things into a virtual environment into the cloud, there's more and more tools on my side and the Nextiva side that you can take advantage of. Um, that's been the fun part, especially – you know, as the work from home rush started, uh, we were getting calls like crazy and emails like crazy saying, oh, man, how much is it going to cost me to use these apps? I'm like, you've already got them. Um, you guys haven't deployed them yet, but you're, they're on your licenses right now. Go to the web store. Um, you can download them. Go to your, your iPhone, Apple store, um, or the, the iTunes. Download them. You're ready to go. Just log in with your credentials. That was a fun conversation to have because I had a lot of scared IT managers. I was like, oh, boy, how much is this going to cost? Um, <laughs> it, was, it was zero, uh, which was nice. Uh, I'll pause for a minute to get some water. Does any, do you have any questions yet or anybody have anything they want me to circle back on? We don't have any questions in the feed right now, um, but you are absolutely welcome to start uh, typing furiously while John's grabbing some water because we'd love to answer all of your questions. Or Marissa, if you had anything that you think would be valuable to add at this point from Merksmart's perspective. I think the, the key is just reiterating that need for everything at, one, you know, at your fingertips in that one place. So having, um, whether it's, you know, not having your video conferencing and your chat and your IM, uh, your you know, all chat box, everything that we use to communicate, pulling, you know, people are gonna try to find their own tools one way or another. So if you give them this nice packaged platform that gives them all of those tools, you remain in control. Um, so that's always something that I like to remind people is that you're by, you're subscribing to the full experience of communication and not just the dial tone that goes between. So it's kind of, you wanna think about it the same as a phone system, but it's the unified communications experience is just much different in a good way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the phone system still does what you think it does. I mean, there's only so many ways to, to do that is answer calls, transfer calls, voicemail to email. Those things are pretty common across the board. But to, yeah, to your point, Marissa, is the apps that live on top are, are ways. And let me show you here. This is an Activa app. And again, this is, this is you know, pretty similar to most of the, the apps you see out there. Um, but the, the, the idea here is you have presence. So I can look down in here and see who's on the phone, who's not. You have things like we have an Outlook plug-in that will change somebody's status. So it'll show, like Chase is here, it'll show he's on a call or he's busy, 
based on uh, his calendar alone, his Outlook calendar. So he didn't have to physically come in here and change the app. It'll automatically change that for him. Now his phone will still ring. It'll just give everybody else on his buddy list an idea that he's busy right at the moment. Um, and this information is the John, same, by the way. That lives the on. Yeah, can you see it? We're still on your, the, the slide deck. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's see. Let's go back to here. Oh, I know what it was. It was because it was sharing my app and not the screen. How about now? That's a beautiful background. Oh, look at that. That's a, the view out my window. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on one sec. Do, do, do. Let's go here. How about now? Yay. There we go. <laughs> there there the All right, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so this is the, in the background, this is NextOS, by the way, and then this is our app living on top of that. Um, so one of the neat things about this is this loads up as you load your computer every day. Um, so you can automate that. I have some customers that'll tell me this is almost like a little virtual time clock they can see as people fire up their computer for the day, especially as everybody's working from home now, you can't look down the hall and see if somebody's there. Uh, so I'm looking down in the here, this is my buddy list. So these are my favorites at the top. Um, luckily, for this live demo, Chase is one of my favorites here. That would be sort of awkward if he wasn't. Uh, but this will show me who's on the phone, who's not. That also shows me where they are and what time it is locally, uh, which is a nice thing. And then down here at the bottom, I just have regular folks. Um, these are the folks that are just on my list that I don't talk to as often. But the way these work is you can customize them by location, by team, and I can collapse these lists and you know however I want that to look. That's a that's a per user customization. Most of what you see in the VoIP world, especially the next Eva, is all customizable per user. So it's all licenses that can be customized. Um, so looking down at these lists, if I just hover over a user like Rob here, I can hit the chat button, I can call him, I can send it as a job to my desk phone, I can video call him. Um, I can also screen share just like we're doing now using Zoom. Um, one of the neat things about that is when you go to do a screen share, um, you can actually share, just like we were doing a minute ago, you can share the, the application or your entire screen if you wanna see their messy desktop. And then the way these work too is you have what's called a room. So a room would allow you just to bring multiple people in here, have a group conversation, a group video call, a group audio call, or any combination they're in. You know, you hit something like one one little button here, it'll bring up an invitation to your room that you can send through Outlook. Um, and then people come in via web browser. So they don't have to have Nextiva, they don't have to download any plugins. Um, most of the, the tools we use don't require anything to the outside world to be Nextiva-ish. They can just click on a link and come in via web browser. Uh, let's see, you have your chat history, you got your voicemail or your call history, voicemail to email, sort of a given these days, but we can also transcribe that. So everybody gets voicemail to email, which is an audio file, um, but we can also take that and transcribe it, turn it into an email or an SMS text message. So you can read it instead of listening to it. And by the way, if you ever play with that on your phone, it's only as good as the audio. So if it's a mumbler, which I tend to be sometimes, uh, it's gonna be a nice little riddle you'll have to read through on your, on your text. And then this is a soft phone. So one of the things we we're talking about earlier is it used to be if you had a 50 person company, you'd have 50 desk phones. That was just how it went. Uh, these days I see more and more where there's 50, 50 uh, users and 30 of them uh, want phones for just old school reasons, but the rest of them are going to use their computer and they're going to use their smartphone. Um, they're just going to use the apps because this is, this is just as good of a phone um, as your desk phone. In fact, the desk phone is just another computer. It just looks like a phone. Um, I have one here cause I like them. I like using my headsets. Um, but I could very easily, and I think Chase, you use nothing but apps, right? Uh, I use a desk phone, but I never touch it. <laughs> all right. We've got a lot of folks out there that use nothing but, uh, but it's, it's, the nice thing is it's all interchangeable. So depending on where you are, how you feel like working that day, that minute, that hour, whatever, um, you you can use whichever one you want. They're all equivalent. Now, the neat thing about that too, to think about is if you have a feature like call recording, um, which is actually now unlimited call recordings included with every next Eva seat. Um, that's a, a new thing for us. Um, but the neat thing is that call recording will follow that user regardless of device. So kind of wrap your head around that is you could start a call on your desk phone, jump over to your cell phone. Um, so regardless of what device it is, the license is gonna follow it. I hope that makes sense. So when you go in and find the call recording, you can find those calls um, and, and regardless of how that person makes the call. The other thing that's really neat and we jump over to like an analytics product is Again, regardless of device, 
your, your activity is going to show up here in, in analytics. So to boil down analytics into simple words, it's a very detailed call reporting system. Um, so you can see every call that comes in, every call that goes out, what time they start, where they came from. Um, so again, this is something that's huge. It's, it was already very popular. Now it's really popular. And actually, we just made this a bundle as well. So this is now included for free. Um, back when we first in, um, wrote it three years ago, three and a half years ago, it was a $3 add-on. Um, and now it's included with every one of our seats. So the cool thing about this is a work from home environment. I can get in here and, and look and see what my, every one of my employees are up to. Um, I like to say there is, there is no hiding from analytics. Uh, what you're doing all day is apparent to the world. Uh, but the nice thing is there's, there's a lot of power in that as well. So just looking down at this demo account, I've got 980 calls, 346 missed. Whew, that's a lot of missed calls. So if I want to find out why, I can start doing some detective work here. I click into 346. I can see where, where they, how they came in, how many per day, what time did they come in? So look, I've missed a couple of calls at 1 a.m. Well, yeah, if you call me at 1 a.m. and I miss that call 100% of the time, well, at least 99% of the time. Um, but the nice thing is, so that'll let you know that you're missing calls in the middle of the night. So what you need to do is set up a, a voicemail box, a call group to grab that and make sure that that's at least answered in some way or another. Um, and then send a voicemail to email to say, hey, you know, we're not here right now, but leave us a message. We'll call you back as soon as we get in. Um, so you can make changes to the routing of the phone system as well. But people also use this for staffing. So they can say, you know what, we've got a spike in calls here right at 9 a.m. You know, we don't need 40 people here answering the phone at, at 8 because we're only getting X number of calls. Um, so there is a ton of data here, and it's all collected. And the longer it goes, the more powerful it becomes. Um, but you can drill down into individual users, individual phone numbers. So kind of think about this from a marketing perspective. Uh, we can give you a number anywhere in the United States for a dollar. You can advertise that on a new billboard website, you know, whatever it is, however you market. And so not only can we show you how many new, how many callers that that number generates, how many people called it, but we can also show you how many unique callers. So not only how many callers, but how many people have called you on this number that have never ever called before. You know, in addition, on the back end of things, we can show as the call comes into your users by caller ID how how the number came in. Um, and another thing to kind of think about with VoIP in general is just because you're in North Carolina or South Carolina, we can still give you a number in Dallas, Texas, San Francisco, California. It'll ring there, um, a local call for them, a free call for you. Um, and you might have to change your accent when you answer the call. But the nice thing is you can make your company look bigger from a brick and mortar perspective just by buying a number for a dollar. So we have a lot of folks that will sort of test the market the next town over. They'll put that number in, a, in, a, in an ad and then see, is it worth growing into that marketplace? Um, we, there's all kinds of fun ways to play with analytics and VoIP um, to make yourself bigger than you actually are. Other tab here is uh, monitoring. So this would be real-time monitoring of the phone system. This is kind of fun. You can look down and see exactly what people are doing real-time. Again, this is all customizable, even down to the colors, but just things like what's important to you. You know, missed calls is a big thing. Those unique calls we talked about. How many answered calls? So if you're looking at into a little, a little service group or a support group, um, and then this will tick live. Um, one of the nice things about the way we designed our websites, by the way, is if you're ever looking at a screen and you're confused, just look for this little movie button. So you can always hit the movie button. It'll bring you up a little movie and show you exactly what you're looking at and how to use it. So we do train everybody. Uh, we're really good about that. Um, knowing full well, you'll probably forget it <laughs> if you don't use it often enough. So you'll see these little movie buttons all over our software. Um, and if you haven't noticed already, going back to our portal, the look and the feel at Nextiva is very similar. Once you're into the portal, you'll notice that the screens don't change drastically because it's all one OS. We haven't bought other people's stuff and pasted it on top of what we do. Um, um, so one other thing, too, that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So just to jump yeah, yeah. in, <laughs> um, we had a question about um, if there was a video uh, tutorial for um, for like Android app user setup, um, mm -hmm. and I believe that the answer to that question is is yes. And Chase actually forwarded a link my way that I'm going to send out to all of you. <laughs> <here. laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Just kind of going back and touching on what you just said. There, there are yep, lots I of video resources. There is. And it's funny. I hate to tell customers, go to, go, go to Google and search it, but there is a, so much information we've built on our YouTube page for just that reason. There's people learn different ways. Um, so there's, you know, your regular white paper guides, there's videos. Um, everybody we train, we train live, by the way. 
Um, but everybody learns differently. So I know it always feels weird for me to say, well, just Google it or go to our YouTube page, but there is a ton of different training documentation there. Um, and as well as our website, there's a lot of support information on the, our support wiki. It's a very transparent company. One of the things I love about Nextiva is there's, we take all the information we have internally and it's customer facing um, for everybody to, to use. Um, circling back to gamification, this is a pretty neat little idea. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but you can put this up on a uh, flat screen or a, a, a laptop in the office. And then as people either make outbound calls, whatever thing you use your or you're looking for, um, they'll work their way up and down the scoreboard. Um, and this is just part of our regular hosted platform, by the way. This isn't any add-on. This isn't anything special. You know, this is part of what we do all day, every day. Um, but it is pretty interesting. You could take your company logo if you wanted to and put it on the back of this, or you can pick from these different themes. But it's, a, uh, it's pretty fun in call centers or even little sales groups if you're having a blitz day to work your way up and down the, uh, the scoreboard here. We actually at work smart because surprisingly, we have cues to help uh, support our folks, uh, our clients, and uh, we have dashboards all over. But we originally invested in a software uh, to do that, to put these types of metrics into um, our dash on, onto our TVs. So again, there's that, all these little different functionalities that just kind of come together, um, which is really nice. Yep. The neat thing I like about analytics is, and we show people this, even very simple customers, we show them this because the idea, what in my mind, what I'm trying to do is when the question comes up in a meeting six months from now and says, man, I wish we could see that data. Somebody raises their hand and go, yeah, we can, we, we've got it. I'll only show you how to log into this. Um, that's the fun part for me because that's, I've been here for four years now. And so we, I circle back to existing customers, usually on their six month anniversary, their one year. And time and time again, I hear a couple of things. Number one, your stuff just works. Um, every day, all day, we don't have to, we have no problems. We've called support twice and I got a friendly person that helped me. Um, but the second thing is just these tools that they say, you know what, we didn't really, when you showed us analytics, we didn't think it was, we were ever going to use it. And now we live and die by it because you can do scheduled reports. So there's only so many data nerds in the world that would come in here and start to pull reports. So for everybody else, you can schedule your reports to show up once a day, once a week, once an hour. Um, so you get used to seeing that every Friday afternoon, you get a report for your group. You can look down, you can customize it. Do you like pie graphs, bar graphs, whatever it is. But when people get used to that, that's a powerful thing. And the nice thing too for us at Nextiva is that's very hard for others to replicate. And to Marissa's point, they might have some sort of weird third-party plugin that sort of works, sort of doesn't. Um, but when it's all under one umbrella and it's all within the phone system, that's hard to beat. I mean, there's not... You know, there's other, other folks out there with a lot of shiny lights, bleak, shiny blinky lights. But when it comes down to the things that actually work all day, every day, that's really where Nextiva hangs its hat is our phone system works great. The audio quality is really good. The tools are approachable. And the company as a, as a whole is like Chase. I mean, we're, we're a company of names and faces with first and last names and email addresses and phone numbers. Um, there's, this isn't a distro heavy company. <laughs> there's not, there's a, it's easy to navigate for me and I'm 3,000 miles away from the mothership out in Scottsdale. Um, and chases down in Tampa. So um, when it comes to interacting with us, um, it's, it's very simple. I, I, I couldn't be happier as an employee. It's easy. We're not perfect by any stretch. You know, we find new and exciting ways to, to screw things up time to time. Um, but I can tell you as a company, we're very accountable and we can get things fixed quickly. We know our business. We've grown this organically from you know, day one. So everybody on Next Eva, whether it's the Joe Bob at a gas station with one seat or some of our largest customers with five, six, seven, 10,000 seats, they're all on the same platform. They all get the same functionality. Um, so when it comes to support, that's much simpler than a lot of our competitors that have legacy this, legacy that. You know, in my world, everybody has all the same tools. And, and frankly, it's, it's really nice for you guys as well, because when you're talking to an SMB customer, they can get a million dollar phone system and just bite off bits and pieces. So they have 10 employees, you know, they can spend a couple hundred bucks and have a you know, world-class phone system with all the same bells and whistles that the guy who's spending $20,000 a month has. That's fun. I mean, it's fun to watch as we watch our customers grow um, because all they had for them to grow from 20 seats to 30 seats is just 10 mouse clicks. I mean, it's, that's the really neat part about you know, cloud communications is we're not having to dig up the ground. We're not having to run cables. We don't have to do any of that stuff. It's just software licenses. Um, if they need a hard phone, then we'll ship them a phone. But other than that, it's just another software license. Um, makes it really easy to scale. Let's see, circling back, let me show you guys just the portal just to kind of give you an idea just how easy it is um, to manage the phone system. 
another nice feature, I know we don't have any snow in North Carolina anymore, but when we did, people would have to come into the office to make changes to the phone system. You know, with cloud communications in general, you log into your portal from your couch um, and you can make changes remotely. So you don't have to, 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 to get in the car. Um, you can also build mini administrators. So that just means there's the master admin, but you can also build other administrators and then limit their scope. So a sales manager could be in charge of his little team. The office in Atlanta could have an administrator for just their site. Um, those are permissions that you can build out that are really cool. And again, just, these are all user licenses per employee. So every employee typically gets a DID. They get whatever they want to use for their phone. Unlimited local long distance. Also, none of that seasonality you used to have with you know, PRIs where if you get into a really busy season, your long distance bill goes through the roof. You know, with us, that's unlimited, you know, in particular, next year, it's unlimited to U.S. and Canada. Um, so they could make as many long distance calls as they want. No problem. Same thing goes with these conference calls we've been talking about is there's no per minute charge on that. You could sit on your 40 person bridge all day, every day and not incur any more cost. Um, just some of the things when we when especially when WorkSmart digs in and starts looking at existing bills, those are some of the things that stick out like a sore thumb. I've seen um, Mike Rogers that works for you guys. I've seen him you know, pull out some four to seven hundred dollar conferencing bills per month. And that pays for me and, and a whole lot more. Um, so those are the things as you as you look at this and understand the total cost of ownership. Um, that's what you need to look at is look at all the bills that are around your communications, um, including company issued cell phones. I've seen other customers out there say, you know what, why are we issuing cell phones? Everybody has a cell phone. Let me just give them the next Eva app that will make their work phone, their, I mean, their personal phone, their work phone when needed. But there's no reason for them to walk around with two phones in their pocket. So just, just kind of think outside the box a little bit on when you go to look at how much this costs. It's not expensive. Um, these are all software subscriptions. Um, but those are the type of things when you think about how, what it looks like to deploy, um, it's, it's, it's not very complicated. And then on the other side of things, by the way, when you're looking at your, your data networks, um, very simple, especially with Nextiva. So it's 100K per call, all HD audio. Um, you don't have to do VLANs. You can if you want. There's, just, there's very minimal. And, and Chasing can go into the requirements of your networking side of things, but uh, the guide on my side is very simple. Yeah, we're very straightforward from a network perspective. We've done our best to be able to work with any network requirements that you may have, as long as you're not blocking our traffic. Bandwidth is a tenth of a megabit per second per phone call, so it's not large. Uh, just for the most part, we're going to work with you and make sure you're not blocking our traffic. And during our onboarding process, you will get a network specialist that will walk through every piece of that with you to make sure you're set up for success before there are issues, prevent issues in the future rather than yeah. waiting until there's issues and going, okay, what do we need to do to fix this? So we <laughs> yeah. take a very proactive yeah. approach. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's actually the first step of, of onboarding is a network check at every, every site that's going to have service, including people's homes. Um, because I, I, like I showed you our network, we spend a ton of money on our network. If you can't get to us, then it's sort of all for naught. So there's no guessing game. This isn't like maybe 10 years ago with VoIP where you get a phone in the mail, you get a link to a website, and you kind of can figure it out. Um, these days, this is all enterprise-grade phone systems. So, you know, before we even think about going to step two, we got to make sure your network is ready for us. So we, we optimize the network first, and then we get into those live build calls and then training, get the phones on the desk, those sorts of things. But, yeah, Chase, that's a good point is we have to make sure that your network is ready. We can see us. It's not much, not much bandwidth, by the way. Like Chase said, it's, uh, you know, 100k 10 calls a meg um, so your average cable connection fiber connection you know you're you're bringing a, a tank to a knife fight so to speak um, from a, a network perspective um, and the other thing to keep in mind we just talk about just disaster recovery um, not even work from home but even just disaster recovery as well is if you had a uh, an outage a power outage an internet outage your very next call could come in on your cell phone um, so the nice thing about that is to the outside world your customers don't know anything different because the, the call routing, the voicemail, the auto attendance, all those things live above you in the cloud. So we might now be routing, instead of your desk phone, we might be going to your cell phone, but the outside world's not aware. So the funny thing about that is you, you might be answering the phone by candlelight, but the outside world doesn't know that. So you can answer calls, transfer calls, three-way call on your cell phone. Um, you're not affected by what's going on if you know some knucklehead hits that power box out in front of your building. So back to the administrative portal, just want to show you guys real quick just how easy. So 
We'll pretend Audrey Copen here is retiring. We're going to replace this seat license again. It's a license with a new person, first name, last name, uh, email, that voicemail to email. Um, do you want to give them a phone number? You can specialize your you know, um, extensions, so you can customize those however you want to scheme those out. Um, you can assign the device from here. I mean, the point being, you can do everything yourself, but you can also just call us. Um, so everybody that answers the phone in next eve is a technician. They're all live bodies, most of which are in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I call them kids because I'm 48, but um, they get chair massages when we're in the office. They get chair massages. They get healthy breakfast. They get all these perks. But the idea we came up with, you know, Tomas and Tracy, the owners came up with, was happy employees lead to happy customers. And this just happens to ring true. Absolutely. I mean, again, I'm, I'm 3,000 miles away, but I can feel the culture all day, every day. You know, I'm the guy who's wearing an Xtiva shirt to the grocery store on a Saturday. Um, I'm all the way in. I, I love the company. But we're all, one of the fun things about it, and if you haven't already picked up on it, is we're, we're all in sort of lockstep of the idea that, you know, we can change the way business communications work. And it's, it's, it's no joke. I mean, we really are. It's the tools that we're putting together, the, the culture that we've built around this company, it's different and it's special. Um, it's fun. Um, but again, here's some of the, uh, the other things we've built here. So uh, like something simple, I call for it always, something you would be using if you go out of, on vacation. You know, again, just like we talked about a minute ago, and that question we had, um, there's videos for everything. So we train you, but you look at this call for it always. Oh, I think that's what I want. You know, if you hover right here, you get a little pop-up, a little mascot. But even better than that, you click here and you get a little video. And again, it'll show you how to turn on, how to turn off, what it does. So for any of the IT managers out there, this helps take the, those easy things off of you. That's sort of the idea here is give your employee the ability to make simple changes themselves. Now, by the way, with great power comes great responsibility. So if this person turns this on, goes on vacation, comes back and says, I don't remember what I did. How do I turn it off? Uh, you or they can get in here. And the last thing they touched is always going to be right here. So you just click that. It's a shortcut to get right back to where you were. And boom, magic turned off. Um, again, this, this portal is the customer and end user facing portal. Um, or you can just call us. Always free to call support to make these changes. But we built a really beautiful portal that makes it really easy and approachable. Anything else in the portal, Chase, you think I should circle back on? I feel like I, I don't want to spend too much time going through features because it'll, it'll make everybody's eyes cross. But <laughs> uh, If you want to do a quick snapshot of the call flow builder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good idea. So for all the, uh, all the tinkerers out there, this is something that's pretty neat. So keep in mind, we do all this for you in um, onboarding. So we, this is a, actually a, a phone call we have where we go through the call flow build. So eight o'clock Monday morning, main number rings, what's that look like? Um, but there's also, because we offer unlimited um, call groups and auto attendance, you do have the ability yourself to come in here and say you're gonna have a new office or a new group internal or just a new call group. You can come in here and set these up yourself. And the thing I like about these call flow builders are, number one, there's a bunch of templates here that are pre-built, but you can build your own. Um, but the neat thing about this, this is really helpful for folks that may not have the best imagination. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest possible way, is that you can see what happens when a call comes in. So instead of sort of wrapping your head around it, you can say, all right, call rings, hit the auto attendant, which auto attendant is gonna hit, hit the little pencil. You can pick one of your existing ones or create a new one. By the way, when we say auto attendant, that's often interchanged with IVR. We just call them auto attendants, but we do have an advanced IVR product, which is a whole other can of worms, which is like natural language processing and automation AI. Um, but this, from, for these terms, we're talking just auto attendant. So that is, you know, thanks for calling Nextiva, push one for sales, two for support, three for billing in this case. Um, so the neat thing about this tool is you can look and say, okay, here's what I think I want to do for our, our next little business unit. If they hit one for sales, all right, let me hit the pencil. All right, let me create a brand new one. You know, is this going to be reachable for an internal phone number or excuse me, an external phone number or just an extension or it can be both? Um, you can add people into this group. So this would be my sales group. Now, one of the fun things about this, especially compared to, to contrast this, not only to some other VoIP systems, but especially premise-based systems, is it's a living, breathing, living, breathing phone system. And what I mean by that is things like these distribution policies. These are things you can start off with, well, simultaneous ring, that's what we always had. We've been doing it for 20 years. We just, you call the number, you get sales, it rings five people's phones. That's the way we like it. That's the way we've done it. But you can also say, you know what, this week, let's try some different ones. Let's see what kind of experience that provides for our employees and our outside customers. Things like regular. So regular is gonna be call one goes user one. Uh, circular, 
would go, the call goes to the person that's been idle the longest, if that makes sense. Now the fun ones here are like uniform and weighted. So uniform looks at it and says, all right, Audrey Copen here has, uh, is three calls behind for the day. So therefore I'm gonna send her the next three calls to get them caught up. So that's really handy sometimes. I was just talking to a car dealership yesterday that they love to do this to build a round robin and make sure everybody gets as many leads as everybody else. Um, but it's very ap applicable in a, a support group as well. And then the last one here that's really interesting is called weighted. And weighted would be skill-based routing. So that means based on skill scores you assign, you can decide how, who gets the most calls based on how, how much tenure. Um, I've also seen a vet clinic here in Charlotte use this in a different way in, the, in that they had five people in the group, two people that answer the phone all the time up front, and then three people that are in the back office. So they just use the scores to say, you know what, the people who I want to answer the phone most of the time, I'm going to score them highest and then have the people that are behind them for callers threes, four, and five, if that makes sense. But the, the thing I'm describing here is that you can do these, run it for a day, a week, and then circle back to your employees and say, how did that work? How did you like it? Oh, we liked it better last week. Okay, change it back to the way it was. Um, there's lots of tweaks and changes you can make in-house without having to call in and, and make, you know, put in tickets with other carriers or whoever provides your premise-based system. These are the type of things you can play with yourself and really start to fine tune to get it operating exactly the way you want it. Um, that's one of the really powerful things about what we do is there's so much customization to the nth degree that we can make it do pretty much anything you want it to do. Just we, it's only, as Chase says, it's limited by your imagination on how you want it to perform. Um, everything is schedulable. That's actually a real word um, up to a year ahead of time. So nights, weekends, holidays, those things that change in the phone system, including things like hold music, which, you know, you legally shouldn't change your whole music, to, you know, Christmas music until December 1st. Uh, those things can all be scheduled well ahead of time. So you don't have to get in here and make a change unless we get a freak snowstorm or an ice storm. Those are the, the neat things that the system will run on its own calendar um, without you having to interfere at all. Um, Anything to I add to that? We might have some people who want to change their, their holiday music uh, to turn on November 1st. <laughs> Well, the way it seems, people do it right after right after uh, Halloween these days. But, yeah. but those things. But it, the neat thing is, and again, coming from a premise-based system, if you have messaging, you have whole music, you have things that you spent money on. Um, we can take those and, and record them and put them into the system ourselves. We also do live uh, auto attendance. I know auto attendance here in the southeast aren't that popular um, because people really like to have reception stands with the phone. I can tell you though, um, I've talked to other customers that will put a very simple auto attendant. So it just says. Thanks for calling. Next Eva, hit one to be connected. That will cut down 99.9% .9 of your robo calls, your spam calls, your wrong calls. Um, and when I go back and talk to, again, that receptionist who usually answers the phone, I ask them, how's it going? They're like, man, I love you. That was, I was getting 60 calls a day of people hanging up, all this nonsense. And now it's every call coming in is somebody that wants to actually talk to somebody. Um, so just, again, just think outside the box a little bit. Part of our job is to say, you know what, you can try this. Try it for a week and then see how much more sane your receptionist is. If you don't like it or your customers complain, then turn it on. It's, it's easy. It's just included. It doesn't cost you anything to, to go down that road. Yeah, and with that, on the uh, call flow builder here, we really are bringing all those call flow pieces together, giving you a visual way to do that. Um, but it's not just visual. When you go to save that, it does uh, give you a nice big green button that says go live. And when you hit that button, that is live but you can also save these as drafts. So if you are trying new things from week to week, uh, you can have your basics set up as a draft, and then the next week you try something, people are like, we hate this, we absolutely have to go back. You don't have to try and remember what was it before. You've got an old draft, you go hit one button, and now you're back to the way that was. So it gives you some built-in versioning right there too. Yep, and you can hit this, hit this export button as well if you want to just send this as a PDF to, to somebody else and say, here's what I'm thinking, what do you think? Um, a lot of folks that have chains, by the way, or multi-locations, they'll build a template and then get into a mode with it, and then it's just plug and play. It just We call it office in a box. Once you have it the way you want it, you see this a lot with uh, Papa John's and Domino's and a lot of the uh, pizza chains. The, the messaging is very simple. Some of the specials are different depending on where you are, but the actual flow is very, very similar. It's because they've come up with a template and they just go boop, 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 boop. When I say I'll show you again, a lot of our best ideas here at Nextiva come from our customers. Uh, we do have 200 developers on staff, so we write most of our code. We have actually all the code you see, we write ourselves. Um, but something like this was used to say four rings, and somebody said, you know what? Rings is great, but how long is that? So that's important to my customer is how long are they waiting before the next step? 
So then we put we put the second in there. So now you know three rings is actually 15 seconds. I'm 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 much more apt to know what 15 seconds is than three rings. What that relates to. Just another good example. I mean, it's just there is these these tools. That's the real one of the overarching values here is that with a with a VoIP phone system or UCAS, it gets more and more valuable as the days go on. Um, a premise-based system is generally about as good as it's going to be day one. It's like a new car. It's really shiny, really nice. And every day that goes on, it gets one one less, one more day closer to being obsolete. With us, my system, I've been here four years. This system has a heck of a lot more horsepower than it did three years ago. And the customers that came on with me when I came came over to Nextiva, they're now taking advantage of all these new tools at no extra cost. Um, so what you see from us is monthly releases where we say, hey, good news. Here's a new button that does this. Now there's SMS. Now there's this. And those are just free enhancements. And I, I don't see that in the in the other side of the world where where, where premise based systems live. It kind of you buy what you have, um, and it is what it is until it until it breaks or becomes you know something you can't upgrade. So we're winding uh, towards the end of time today. Yeah. So I figured I would just mention uh, if you have any questions about anything that we've gone over before uh, so far, or if you're curious about um, if something is possible with Nextiva, um, now's a really good time to pop that into the, the chat or the Q&A because we would love to address your specific concerns for your business. That was it. You can <laughs> can we can we play the I want to hear the Jeopardy music there. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's really that that's us in a nutshell. I mean there's that's, there's a lot of um, a lot of roads you can go down with contact center, advanced IVR. So um, that's sort of a touched on a minute ago. But that's you probably all experienced advanced IVR. That's where you call in and it, you can actually speak um, and it does things. It'll make changes. You can do even password resets this way. Um, things like where you wait on hold and it says you know what if you want to save your spot. You know, you can bail and this virtual agent will hold on to your spot and then it'll call you back when it's your turn. Uh, we offer those as well, but um, there's just a lot of a lot of additional features and functionality. TCI credit card processing is another big one, even for a very small business. I mean, I think a lot of companies, unfortunately, are still taking credit cards over the phone, which is a no-no, um, but we have the ability to give you an extension on the phone system. You transfer a caller there. That's a credit card processor, a virtual agent that does it. They do their payment and they come right back to you. Um, so there's a couple of extra layers and fun things you can think about. And again, that's another thing that has a cost. Um, so a lot of folks are paying a lot of money for credit card processing. The advanced IVR processing I'm told is, is much less than that. Um, but I would say just engage, work smart, um, let them know what you're trying to do um, and then have them kind of flesh out. And what they're really good at is, is pairing you up with who they think is going to do a good job. Um, and then you'll, you'll, from us, I can I commit to you, Without doubt, is that Chase and I, when we dig in, we'll figure out what's a good idea, what's not. If um, you know, if we're not a good fit, I'm the first person to tell you. I, I'm I'm not one to put a square peg in a round hole. Um, but let us understand what your environment is, what your what your end goals are, um, and we'll do a really good job, you know, putting together a solution for you. Cool. Uh, well, we don't have any uh, new questions in the chat feed or the Q and A. Um, so can wrap up. Thank you so much to both of you. <laughs> this was great. Um, yeah, I, as you were talking, like at the beginning and kind of all throughout the process, I, I couldn't stop getting out of my head this like Lord of the Rings reference of it's like one device to rule them all, one, one app to rule them all. Uh, I love the idea of being able to have my, my cell phone um, act as my personal device, but also my work device with being able to see if this is a work call or a personal call and being able to manage that all in one spot. So, um, yeah, and there's a lot of really great things. Your point, uh, real quick before you move on to your point about, um, you know, liking having your device and being able to connect it, even if you think, well, we're not quite, you know, we're not there yet, um, the, your, your people are. Um, everyone, all the users, all of us as users are ready to connect at our fingertips. Um, and so if you don't give them the avenue to do that through using mobile devices, then they will create solutions for themselves. Um, so they might uh, go to personal devices, um, which again is, uh, can open you up to some issues, whether it's control of quality for service, um, you know, you won't, you'll lose your recording. 
um, or just being able to go into metric, especially now with teams being remote, people are having to discover different ways to manage teams. Metrics are a great way to do that. So um, kind of considering what the future is going to look like is definitely uh, is going to be interesting for how we throw a hosted whip. I think that's just going to be a natural progression for us all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah we're, yeah, we're hearing from a lot of folks that are saying as soon as we all get back in the office, we're, we, we have to get to cloud. We should have done it last year. We didn't. Um, so we had, a, as you can imagine, we had a huge rush of, of, of things to get people out to the to work from home. But what we're going to see the second half of the year is a, a ton of new business. The folks that said we, we should have done this last year, we didn't. So let's get it done this year. So there is a uh, our, our whole entire industry is exploding. Um, and by the way, we're only at about 15 percent market penetration, all of us combined. So there's still 85% of the marketplace that is on prem based systems that, and that's, that's our growth trajectory over the next 10 years is all of those folks are heading to the cloud. <laughs> I think it's fascinating that there's so many people still on, on premise uh, phone systems. Yeah. So there's a lot of great opportunity here. Um, and I will oh, yeah. second Marissa's point about your users being ready for something that's um, at your fingertips all the time. I do not consider myself a tech person. I am an events person. Um, so I'm an end user here at WorkSmart. And if I, <laughs> I have to, I have to be able to like access and text all of my vendors um, while I'm out on site working an event. I just, I, I have to have that. So yeah. Okay. So thank you both. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I was going to say, it also gives you the ability by differentiating that rather than giving out your yeah. cell phone, you get to turn it off. Mm. So you can just That's sign different. out when you're on vacation or after hours. You, you don't have to worry about people <laughs> calling your cell phone. So just from the other side, keep that in mind too. Yep. Yeah, I just Absolutely. saw Marissa's eyes like bulge out of her head. And I, <laughs> <laughs> can you want me I can to ride right. off time. What is off time? Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so thank you so much to John and Chase uh, both for running us through um, this new way of thinking about phone systems uh, and what that looks like with Nextiva. Um, thanks, Marissa, for joining again today um, and bringing all of your wonderful insight. Uh, and I also wanted to say thank you to the Durham Chamber of Commerce, um, who we've been coordinating uh, with on these events to make this available to all of the local Durham uh, chamber members. So thank all of you, all of you, all the thank yous everywhere. All right, so coming up, we have a bunch of uh, additional events in the uh, Work Smart Live remote office series, and we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. So next week, you can join us again on Thursday. Um, we're going to be doing another panel event, which was a lot of fun last time, uh, where we're bringing in experts from the cybersecurity field. So we're going to be talking about um, new threats because uh, and any time that there's a major shift in the world, that means there's new cybersecurity threats and people think of fun and new interesting ways to hack into your devices. Um, but we're also mm -hmm. going to be talking about things like compliance and insurance and what do we think the future is going to look like while we stay in these remote environments or once we start going back into physical buildings again. So definitely join us for that. Um, and then we have a couple of like really end user focused trainings coming up, uh, which um, seem to be, we get a lot of questions about this. So I'm excited that we're bringing this um, into like a virtual web webinar format for everyone to join. So we're going to be taking a look at Office 365 uh, and the productivity and collaboration features of those things. So, and we're breaking this up into two different groups because there's a lot of content to cover. So uh, the first session, we're going to be looking at all of the apps within Office 365 and we're going to build out like a fake project so you can see myself and Marissa collaborating on different things across things like Planner and OneDrive and OneNote and Outlook. And then we're going to bring it all together in the next week into Teams. What is this? How can Teams be your home hub? Um, and what does that look like from an end user's perspective? So and you can invite your end users, you can show up just as, a, um, as the technical resource lead for your office, um, but we've got some really good content coming up in that. And then newly on the schedule is the Home Office Hardware Solutions um, webinar that we're going to do in partnership with Lenovo. So if you have a lot of um, team members who are thinking about maybe working from home long term um, or 
maybe you just need a lot more mobility because everyone's like shifting around from the office to home. Um, what, what hardware do you need? Do you maybe need to rethink your hardware strategy and maybe think about laptops more as opposed to desktops? So we'll kind of run through all of the really great um, products that Lenovo has and the features that you should be thinking about. And then we'll also talk about some financing and leasing options because those things are really important too. So, and if you can't make any of those things live, but you still want the content, you can email me um, and I will make sure that you get on the registration list and you'll get a recording. So that's it. Cool. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining Woo! us. Woo! Thanks, guys. That was awesome. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was great. Feel free to reach out with any questions, guys. We're always here. And uh, thanks again for your time. Work smart. You guys are awesome. You're awesome, too. <laughs> thanks, guys. I hope you have a good one. Bye. Bye.